Hello folks, this is Robert Cook. I'm back for my third video in the compl complimentary series on interpretation of piping and instrumentation diagrams. I have up here in my Firefox browser the local home page with my bio and the links to the to the series that I provided uh, last year. And um, what I'd like to do is continue on in my video series with the various symbols and tags on the first lead sheet which I provide as an attachment to the series uh, instrumentation and valves. The, the video prior to this one talked in detail about the ISA standard symbols that are used for instrumentation and controls. I went over uh, how, they, how they're used on P&I, example P&Is along with uh, a description of some of the more common labels inside the uh, level flow, temperature transmission, so forth. So this, this video will be much simpler. We're just going to follow up with common valve line symbology and how it's applied on P&Is. And uh, it's, it's critical stuff and it's probably going to be uh, very intuitively obvious to you so um, just bear with me if this has been there and you've done that and this is like oh come on Bob uh, that's fine but um, for the for the newer engineers and operations or maybe if you're in business development and you're just looking for a better understanding of P&I's because that's integral to your business and, and good for you then I hope this is helpful to you but so let's start with the uh, the valve symbols themselves now I'm just going to talk about the application of valve symbology. I'm not going to talk about the use of valves as uh, the type of valve that's suitable for various services. That could be a, a topic of, of discussion in and of itself. Um, but I can talk in general about when you pick certain valves and, and why you do it. And uh, if you're not familiar with valve types, that, that's, not, that's not important. But on the left column here in the valve symbol, are the major valve types that you'll find in in many plants. Uh, the ball valve shown here is a very common on-off valve. Butterfly valve which is used uh, a lot on vapors and gases. Uh, the good old check valve which prevents flow from going backwards in a line. It could be a gate, a plunger, piston, um, split disc check is a special type of check valve that's commonly applied on vapor uh, gas service uh, where um, it provides a better shutoff for, for vapors and uh, it tends to be spring loaded so the, there's no fluid weight and it, uh, it helps seal. Uh, diaphragm valve is, uh, is a really good control type valve for flow control which is usually on a uh, flexible elastomeric uh, diaphragm that you can pinch down with a with a plunger that that uh, can control flow. The gate valve is the workhorse um, in many chemical refining services uh, simply shown by the more generic and common valve symbol of just an X and um, that's uh, that's that's pretty much. Uh, I think anyone has seen a valve symbol represented on a drawing is going to see the gate. It's a common symbol that's used as a general illustration on P process flow diagrams, which uh, we'll talk about in a different series. Uh, then you have the globe valve, which is a, a very common valve for flow control and clean liquid services. Uh, the knife gate, which is a special type of gate which is used a lot on product silos and, and dry solids feeding where you need um, or, or conveyors uh, where it's um, you're not dealing with fluids so much as you are dry powders and shut off on solids which is my experience. A needle valve very precise fine-tuned control of, of fluids um, commonly if you've ever worked with a rotameter from uh, any one of a number of suppliers that may have a needle valve built into it or flow control valve built into it that you turn the dial that the chances are quite good it's a needle valve. Uh, pinch valve is a special kind of valve much like a um, diaphragm in terms of operation 
uh, used on products, uh, or lines containing slurries and solids where uh, control with the other types of globe or gate or have their own uh, challenges. Uh, pinch valves are, uh, tend to be elastomeric tubes that are simply pinched by uh, bars that uh, are clamped down over it. And then a plug valve is a valve very similar to a ball valve uh, except it's uh, a plug or a cylinder instead of a ball with a hole of some type uh, through it from which you turn it uh, on off in a 90 degree manner. So those valves are the body, so-called body of the valve. If you come over to a typical P&I and you look at some of the valves that I've shown uh, here on the discharge of this tank, it's clear that that valve is a, a two inch ball valve. And um, if you, in the cases where, uh, when you're drafting this with, with AutoCAD, you can put in things like specification, I do in the attributes of the drawing, and you can extract that information. Here, these are generic drawings, I'm not including it, but uh, you could put in there conceivably manufacturer model information and make that available to operations who, uh, just by double clicking on it, can know where to go and buy a replacement in kind. Um, the other kind of uh, annotation that's very common on valves is uh, a tag for referencing it. Um, referencing valves that need to be operated or referenced in operating procedures is critical. I've seen operating procedures talk about, or well, you could say, uh, open the isolation valve on the discharge from tank 1705. Well, if that tank has a couple nozzles with a couple valves, it may not be clear which one is being referred to. But if you say in your first procedure, open V1101, suddenly it's evident what valve you're referencing. And in, in this case, I think that all the valves, manually operated valves, as, as, as shown by the fact that they don't have an actuator like this one does, XV1705, means it's manually actuated, have tags on them so that they can be individually referenced in procedures. But uh, getting back to the actual valve type, that's a ball. I think all of these valves on this P&I are, are ball valves. Um, we do see uh, a check valve here, inch and a half check valve. Uh, another ball valve here is a uh, actually a globe valve. It's connected, it's not a manual valve, it's connected to the an actuator. It's air driven, so that's uh, a controller uh, control valve. It's it's adjust. It can provides better flow control for a level control loop. And uh, let's see on the other P and I. There's three P and Is in the example set. I'm only pulling up two here because they provide most of the information. Uh, we can see here that I am actually providing a diaphragm valve symbol. There's a diaphragm valve, inch and a half, V2010. Um, and um, let's see, that's, uh, anyway, uh, without getting into too much detail about all the, the application of the different valves, just by looking at a symbol, you can reference back to the lead sheet, what kind of valve is that? Now, some other um, things that uh, need to be, uh, that are important is the connection type. Now, p and generally show general connections through just a line connecting the valve to the valve and that would mean it could be uh, just threaded very commonly used um, in plastic pipe systems or um, you would have I, I tend to use the socket welded if you're using PVC CPVC systems and that just shows that these little lines coming off the the valve itself, which illustrate that that would probably be a socket welded. It could also be used for socket welded fittings. Um, metallic pipe systems tend not to do that on PIs because even though pipe systems will use socket welding throughout, 
you reserve the actual specification for connection type to the line specification which complements a PNI. And I do want to get into that in more detail later because it's a very important topic as it relates to properly specifying line service. And, and I'll cover that a little bit in further video series here. But for purposes now, when you tend to look at a PNI, uh, most systems that are flanged uh, will show flanging in this manner with double lines, which loosely illustrates a flange. Threaded or welded are generally just shown as a single line. Um, butt welding and socket welding are very seldomly shown again unless it's on a plastic system and then I will tend to show socket welding on plastic systems using these symbols. Um, you can see here on uh, maybe bleeders or drains I'll show um, that a valve might have both. It might be threaded on one end and socket welded on the other. And this is, tends to be a, a specification that's used commonly on chemical and refining systems where the, uh, bleeders and drains are welded to the main line and the body is removable and, um, and it's threaded on the, on, the, on the discharge side to maybe a drain system or a hose or something. And uh, what that does is it maintains the integrity of the piping line specification where in cases where, for example, say this line we're carrying caustic or some other fluid that's not um, conducive where threading would uh, be a concern uh, or maybe for pressure temperature considerations threading would be a concern so it's showing socket welded on one side of the valve and probably threaded on the other side so that's uh, in a nutshell your valve symbols and your connection types which can also be applied to lines so if you have uh, lines that are that are flanged for some reason at a tie point you may just show two vertical lines to illustrate that that's a flange at a break tie point um, other valve symbols that are less commonly applied but uh, you should be aware of is an angle valve that's uh, pretty self-evident uh, three-way valves be they um, plug or are mostly ball since three-way valves tend to just direct flow you'll have a line coming into the ball valve as a common route and then you will have directions A or B depending on which way you turn it uh, pressure relief valve tends to have these little serrations at the top um, to illustrate pressure relief uh, pressure reducing valve with an external sensor uh, and then inter integrated uh, pressure relief pressure regulator like you might have on a compressor where there's no obvious external sensor you just turn the dial and it senses it internally and then um, pressure relief vacuum vent which is common on tanks that um, that have um, aeration systems going into them uh, for example my field I've, I've applied these a lot on tanks that are draining down in biological systems so that uh, if you have excess air it can purge but if if you're draining it it can it can pull a vacuum and um, you could you could look at it uh, similar to a conservation vent but um, I don't use those types of symbols too much for conservation vents but uh, just general relief on systems where uh, you need to have vacuum break so that's pretty much uh, valves on, on valve actuators the most common types that, that I'm aware of are uh, pistons where you simply have a piston driven by air and um, you, you could either drive by air to open it, which if you put air on the bottom side of the piston, the piston rises, the valve opens and it's spring return or you could have air on both sides of the valve to either close it and open it, but um, in general that's the symbol for a piston type valve and it's it's always important in my view to illustrate on an actuated valve what its fail condition is a, a valve that loses air and has spring return to open would show as a fail open on the other hand a valve that might lose air and fail with the spring return to the closed position 
would be shown fail close 